Hi everyone, welcome back to SAT2 Math 2C. So um, after the introduction topic, we basically went over some of the basic uh, specs of the test in terms of timing, in terms of some of the general techniques that you need to have to solve these problems. Um, what we're going to do in the next uh, a series of lectures is actually I'm going to break them into two parts. The first part of the lecture series is actually going to be topics. I'm going to review some of the essential topics that are on SAT 2C, Math 2C. And afterwards, I'm going to run a couple of serious lectures in just in terms of problem solving. I'm going to show you guys a specific problems that might show up on the test and how we are going to handle these, uh, these problems. So um, again, I assume you're taking 2C, so we have a pretty basic grasp of uh, fundamental algebra, uh, fundamental geometry. So the topics I'm going to review are topics that are students tip typically get wrong or I think the topics that you might benefit from uh, digging a little deeper and the topics that often confuse students. So I will cover most of the intermediate slash uh, difficult topics. Um, so if you think about SAT 2C, really the level of mathematical skills that you need to have is high school uh, pre-calculus. If you finish high school pre-calculus, you do have enough knowledge actually to take the test. So what makes the test so hard? What makes the test so hard is that test is designed so that you do not solve the problems the way that you're used to in school. Because if you do it that way, one, it takes too long. Number two, there are always little tricks in there or little traps there to catch you. So what we're going to do while we go over the topics to demonstrate some of the little things you can do to help you avoid those little pitfalls. Um, but nothing can be a fundamental understanding of the topics that uh, that's going to be covered on the test. So let's get started. What is the sort of the most fundamental topic in pre-calculus? If you remember, you spend a large chunk of time dealing with this thing called polynomials. Right? So we're going to do a quick review. My approach is going to be a little different. I'm going to start from a very basic, uh, simple version of polynomial, expand it up. And this will cover over two lectures so you get a sense of what kind of, um, what kind of materials you have to know. Again, it sounds really bad, but it doesn't have to be. If you understand the topic, just like everything else, if you understand it, you don't have to memorize it. Okay? So let's go to polynomial. What does it mean to have a polynomial? Well, poly means what? The word poly means many, as many of you probably know, and nomials means terms, okay? So the mathematical implication of having a polynomial, the way it's defined is that you start off with a n to the um, a n times x to the nth power plus a m minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus all the way to a 1 x1 plus a0 x0. So this is a function. Again, if we need to define function, we can do that in a little bit later topic. This is a function of x, polynomial of x, and this is basically the most general form of any polynomial. Okay? P of x is you go to a n. This is what we call coefficients. Right, this is the term. Right, and this is the power or the exponent. Right, just a couple of very simple terms. A very generic way of writing a polynomial, right? A n to the x to the n, blah, blah, blah. Right, so in this case, nomenclature wise, this will be called the nth termed polynomial. Okay, nth term polynomial. And this n is the degree. Degree of the polynomial. Why am I going through these terms so quickly? Or actually even mention these terms? Because sometimes in the test these terms come up and students, you know what they're talking about, but if you don't remember what specifically what each term means, you might get confused, right? So typically what's a second degree polynomial? Well, we're used to that, right? It's what we have. That is a second degree polynomial. You might not necessarily remember that as a second degree polynomial, right? You just think, oh yeah, this is just a, a three term equation, 
right? So if they bring it up, oh, uh, it's a third, three degree polynomial, it sounds really fancy, and you might lose sense of what they're asking. But if they're just asking something very, very fundamental, very basic. So keep in mind, nomenclature is important. Kind of know the language they like to use. They like to use very technical terms so that you are responsible, but you might not pay attention in school, right? But keep these things in mind and make sure you ha have a good grasp of these. So that's it, polynomial. Very simple. Everything that you're going to do about polynomial, okay, no matter what topic, what technique, what you're learning, always remember the big picture. Everything you're going to do about top polynomial is going to try to find x. That's all you're going to do. Every single technique, every single thing you do is about finding x, okay? So keep that in mind. Now let's go down a row. So this is the nth term. This is the second term, which is n minus 1. So it's a degree lower, right? And you go all the way down to the a, a1 x to the first, and then a0 x to the 0. Now what is this? What's x to the 0? x to the 0 is simply equal to 1, to 1, right? So this is, you can actually drop that. This is just a constant term, OK? This is just a constant term. So. In, in, a, in a very, um, pretty much all polynomials, you, you're going to get a, you know, constant term. So very fancy way of writing, writing a very simple equation is something that you already know, but keep in mind, this is what they like to show. This is what they like to mess with you, okay? So you ask me, what is the simplest polynomial you can have? Well, let's take a look at this guy and tell, ask yourself, what is really the simplest polynomial you could deal with? Well, isn't that just this guy, right? We're going to break this down. We're going to do the zero degree polynomial first. Well, zero degree polynomial is interesting because they are not even polynomial, right? They're just one term. What's an example of zero degree polynomial? That's it, right? That's a zero degree polynomial. Why? Because what's not written is that x to the zero, right? We know that's equal to one, so we don't write this. And in this case, a, a naught or a zero is just two, right? That's all you have to know. Zero degree polynomial. Really simple, right? And then often we write this as y is equal to 2. Now, what does this guy look like on a Cartesian uh, coordinate plane? Well, all you have to do is write your plane out and then say, okay, this is the x, right? This is the y. Quick review. If, again, if you did your uh, pre calc or you did uh, algebra, you remember this guy, right? Cartesian coordinate 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4. Y is equal to look like what? That's it. Everything Y is equal to 2. It doesn't matter what X is. Y is always equal to 2. OK? Very simple. Very, very straightforward. Right? You say, well, but I don't need to know that. You do. Because sometimes they trick you to say, what does zero degree polynomial look like? Well, zero degree polynomial is simply y is equal to number. So all these guys are just going to be lines that are straight, right? Parallel to the y axis, unless they do x is equal to 2, then in that case, it will be lines that look like these. OK? So that's it. Zero degree polynomial are just either vertical or horizontal lines. Depends on which one it is. That's all you have to know. Let's move on. Now you say, all right, zero degree polynomial, that's kind of a joke. I don't really care. Fair enough. Let's move on to what's after zero. First group, first degree polynomial, right? Again. What's a first degree polynomial look like? Well, in our term, it's going to look like a1 x1 plus a0. I'm just going to skip the a0, uh, x0, right? That's what it looks like. You might say, uh, I've never seen this before. Yes, you have. Guess what? Y 
This is the term that you used to see for a first degree polynomial. Right, what is that? Oh, you say, I remember that this is what? Po first degree polynomial, also known as the linear equation. Okay, linear equation. Why? By the definition, linear equation means you are having lines, right? You have lines. What do these lines call? Well, let's use a different color. M is your slope and B is your y-intercept. Okay, so I like to call this the standard form of the linear equation, right? Y, y is equal to mx plus b. So if you have any equation that presents this form, you can sketch out on a graph paper right away. For instance, right, your x, your y. Um, let's say I have y is equal to 2x plus 1. Right? What does this mean? First of all, what does slope mean? Slope is defined as delta y over delta x. Right? Delta y over delta x or y2 minus y1 minus, divided by x2 minus x1. Stuff that you learned a while ago, but just keep that in mind, right? In probably pre pre-algebra you learned this, right? Change of y over change of x. That's your slope. So in this case your slope is what? Y change if it's 2, that means your y changes 2 and your x changes 1. So go up by 2, go across by 1, right? Now you look usually look at the y intercept first. Literally what does y intercept mean? Y intercept means where are you intercepting the y axis, right? In this case if it's 1, that's the first point. And now you know that your slope is 2, so let's go up by 2, go across by 1. That's your next spot. Draw your line there. You're home free. Okay? Really simple, really quick. Right? This is your slope intercept equation. Hi, Sam. Not bad. What do we need to know about these guys? Well, two things I want you to know. One, if two lines are parallel, universal symbol being parallel, your slopes have to be equal. M1 has to equal to M2. So if your two lines, let's say I have y is equal to 2x plus 1, I have another one that says y is equal to 2x plus 3. These two lines are parallel. Why? Because they have the same slope, 2 and 2. So what does this one look like? 1, 2, 3, the 1, 2, 3, the y-intercept is here, and in my very twisted way, that's what the second line looks like. So obviously these two lines are parallel. Okay, so that's what this means. Lines are parallel, okay? What else do you need to know? Well, also, if the two lines are perpendicular, right, then M1 is the negative reciprocal of M2. Ah, that looks pretty bad. Here you go, perpendicular. Okay, if two lines are perpendicular, then M1 is equal to negative 1 over reciprocal of the other one. So what would the perpendicular line of this guy look like? Okay minus 1 over 2x. What would that line look like? Look like this. These two lines are perpendicular, even though my, my horrible drawing on the board doesn't look like it. These two lines will be perpendicular. Why? Because this is the negative reciprocal of that. A really quick way to tell, if you multiply the two, you get negative 1 out of it. So in other words, another way you can look at this is that m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1. Two very basic things you probably already know, but absolutely, absolutely important, okay? So if they're looking for parallel lines, you know the slopes are equal. If they're looking for perpendicular lines, the product of two slopes are equal to minus 1, or in other words, they are negative reciprocal. Okay? So you say, all right, mm, that's pretty useful, right? This is the form of a linear equation that everyone knows. 
Okay? This is a form equation that everyone knows. So, what, do we, what else do we need to know? Well, this is also what often been called What have we called this? This is the slope intercept form. Okay? This is the slope intercept form. There's another form. What's the second form? Uh, this one is a little bit easier to, to sort of graph, so, sort of draft it out. Uh, this is the slope point form. Okay? This is the slope point form. And it's quite useful in a certain sense. Right? What does that mean, slope point? Well, your k is a slope. I like to use K. I know some, you can use M. You know what? Let's use M in this case because you guys are used to uh, CM. M is the slope, and x1, y1 is simply a point on the graph. Okay. A little bit different, right? Uh, not that much because y, in, in a sense, Y intercept gives you what? gives you a point on the graph. In this case, a point, x1, y1 is a point on a graph. So you can use this to sketch out, again, whatever uh, the, um, the, gra the graph asks you. So why, when is this form really useful? Well, I say, OK, I want a line that has a slope of 2, and I want to intersect at 1 and 2, right? I want a line, just random line with slope 2, so we know it kind of looks like this, and wanted to actually touch 1 and 2. So all you have to do, go to 1, right, x, and then 1 and 2, and it has a slope of 2, so 1, 2, 1. So what, that's what this line looks like, but more importantly, what's the format of this line? Right, you put this in, so y minus y1, so y minus y1, y1 in this case what? 2 is equal to the slope, which is 2, times x minus, what's x1? 1 in this case. Right, so it's very simple to actually get this form out, but... I much prefer to look at an equation. You guys are not used to look at this. Me neither. So it's a lot easier to actually convert this back to the slope intercept, which is not bad, right? If we do that, just y minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 2. Right? And all it will be is just what? y is equal to 2x. Okay? Well, due to my horrible drawing, it doesn't look like that, but um, what it should look like is the line actually go through the origin. All right, so, because this is the slope, one, uh, one, one and two, yeah, and that's, it should look more like that, okay? So that actually predicts, right, because the, the y-intercept is zero and the slope is two. That's how it works, okay? Both forms are very useful. Okay, I would say this form is slightly more useful because this is the kind of question you're going to see on the test. What do I mean? All right, let's see. They're going to ask you this. They say, okay, let's do an example. I have an equation, I have a function that says this f of x is equal to minus 1 over 3x plus 2. Please give me an equation that's perpendicular to this guy. Right? Now, if I just ask you that, 
Think about it. How many answers are there? Well, this is a random line with a negative slope, so it looks like this. If I want to find a perpendicular line, how many lines do I have? Well, infinite, right? So I need to give you a second condition. I want to find a line that's this and has a point at 1 and 3. Ha! 1 and 3 might be here, so I'm basically narrowing down to this line. Okay? So they have to give you two conditions, right? So when they give you a problem like that, and that shows up on the test quite often, um, in the sort of like the easy slash medium range question. I want to line that's perpendicular to this and me at this point. This format is really difficult to use because they didn't give you a y-intercept. Yeah, you get the slope right away, but you didn't have the y-intercept, so it's a little bit difficult to comprehend. Okay? So what do you do? Well, I like to use this format, right? We already have a point and we have a slope. Bunk, we just have to what? Pop it in. Y minus Y1, my Y minus 3, is equal to slope, which is, um, in this case, what's slope of this guy? Well, if I'm looking for something per perpendicular, it's negative reciprocal. Negative reciprocal of this guy is what? 3 times X minus 1. Right? That's it. See what's the advantage of using this format, right? You plug it in, immediately you're done. Right? And then, of course, the answer choices are going to be in this format. So all you have to do is what? All you had to do is just convert. Okay? So how do I convert? Y it minus y is equal to 3x minus 3 plus 3, or y is equal to 3x. That's it. That's gonna be your answer. Very quick. Okay? A lot of kids, I'm pretty sure you learned this format, but a lot of you guys kind of forget because you use this so much. But for problems like this, and I guarantee you for linear equations, that's the most popular one. You're always gonna see this, right? And when that comes up, this format is so much more advantageous. Okay? This format is so much advantageous. So keep in mind, so what we did is we did two of the most straightforward polynomials you can have, right? A zero degree polynomial and a first degree polynomial. Again, you say, oh, well, I know first degree polynomial. But what I want to point out is make sure you know this one because this is really useful. Okay? Because you're often given a point and the slope, you're not usually given the y-intercept. So always be able to do this, and you can always come back in. Okay? In the next lecture, we're going to expand a little bit. While we talk about a first degree, what's next? Well, we're going to talk about second degree polynomial.